Good morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. Day 108, April 18th is where we're at, reading the Bible in chronological order. Started with Genesis, went to Job, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, which is where we are, with some sprinklings of 1 Chronicles and Psalms in there. And today is no different. We're sprinkling some 1 Chronicles and some and one psalm, Psalm 56, into our reading from 1 Samuel. Just by quick, I guess, well, we'll talk about the recap when we get in there, but David just got married again to two women this time. He got married to Nabal's wife, whom Yahweh killed, Abigail. And then we have this little aside here. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they both became his wives. Just a little one-liner there. And they both became his wives. It's whatever, I guess. First Samuel 26, 1. The Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah saying, doesn't David hide himself in the hill of Hakila, which is before the desert? And if you recall, this happened before. <laughs> I was like, eh, 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 I'm pretty sure this, I'm pretty sure this happened before here where the Ziphites came and told Saul, hey, isn't David hiding in the desert? He's like, he's back. He's back on the mountain. He's back on the mountain, and you should come get him. This is from 1 Samuel 23, verse 19. Then the Ziphites came to Saul to Gibeah, came up to Saul to Gibeah, saying, doesn't David hide himself with us in the strongholds in the woods in the hill of Hakila, which is on the south in the desert? Now, therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of your soul to come down, and our part will be to deliver him up into the king's hand. So the Ziphites are back at it again. They're like, yo, he's back. So what does Saul do? And David had just spared his life. So Saul left, was weeping, right? He wept, 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 yeah, wept. Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul encamped in the hill of Hakila. I was like, ah, I remember where you were, which is before the desert, by the way. But David stayed in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. Mm-hmm. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul had certainly come. Then David arose and came to the place where Saul had encamped. And David saw the place where Saul lay with Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of his army. Saul lay within the place of the wagons, and the people were encamped around him. Then David answered and said to Ahimelech the Hittite and to Abishai the son of Zeriah the brother of Joab saying who will go down with me to Saul to the camp. Abishai said I will go down with you. So David and Abishai came to the people by night and behold Saul lay sleeping within the place of the wagons with his spear stuck in the ground at his head and Abner and the people lay around him. Then Abishai said to David God has delivered up your enemy into your hand today. Now, therefore, please let me strike him with the spear to the earth at one stroke, and I will not strike him the second time. I got this one shot, one kill with the spear right here. David said to Abishai, don't destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against Yahweh's anointed and be guiltless? David said, as Yahweh lives, Yahweh will strike him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall go down into battle and perish. Yahweh forbid it that I should stretch out my hand against Yahweh's anointed. But now, please, take the spear that is at his head, and the jar of water, and let's go. So David took the spear and the jar of water from Saul's head, and they went away. No man saw it or knew it, nor did any awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from Yahweh had fallen on them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of the mountain far away, a great space between them. And David cried to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Don't you answer, Abner? Then Abner answered, Who are you who cries to the king? David said to Abner, Aren't you a man? Who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not kept watch over your Lord, the king? For one of the people came in to destroy the king, your Lord. This isn't, this thing isn't good that you have done. As Yahweh lives, you are worthy to die because you have not kept watch over your Lord, Yahweh's anointed. Now see where the king's spear is in the jar of water that was at his head. It's kind of like, so he's, you know, on another, like a valley in between them. And he's talking trash, which is good. Or he's calling out. Maybe he's not talking trash. Verse 17, Saul recognized David's voice and said, is this your voice, my son, David? David said, it is my voice, my Lord, O king. 
He said, Why does my Lord pursue his servant? For what have I done? What evil is in my hand? Now therefore please let my Lord the king hear the words of his servant. If it is so that Yahweh has stirred up stirred you up against me, let him accept an offering. But if it is the children of men, they are cursed before Yahweh, for they have driven me out today that I shouldn't cling to Yahweh's inheritance, saying, Go serve other gods. Probably talking about the Ziphites here, right? Who who apparently are tired of David being there and went and ratted him out again and was like yo he's here let's go let's go get him now therefore don't let my blood fall to the earth away from the presence of Yahweh for the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea as when one hunts a partridge in the mountains then Saul said I have sinned return my son David for I will no more do you harm because my life was precious in your eyes today behold I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly David answered behold the spear O king then let one of the young men come over and get it Yahweh will render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness because Yahweh delivered you into my hand today and I wouldn't stretch out my hand against Yahweh's anointed. Behold, as your life was respected today in my eyes, so let my life be respected in Yahweh's eyes and let him deliver me out of all oppression. Then Saul said to David, You are blessed, my son David. You will both do mightily and will surely prevail. So David went his way and Saul returned to his place. 1 Samuel 27, verse 1. David said in his heart, I will now perish one day by the hand of Saul. He's looking around, he's like, everybody snitching me out, going to tell Saul where I'm at, and then he comes out and hunts me. And it's twice now that I've not killed him, and he repents, or appears to, appears to repent, but then he comes out and does it again. So it's not true repentance. Who knows what the, what's going on right here? There's nothing better for me than that I should escape into the land of the Philistines, and Saul will despair of me to seek me any more in all the borders of Israel. So I will escape out of his hand. David arose and passed over he and the six hundred men who were with him to Achish, Achish, the son of Maok, the king of Gath. Uh, so it's, it looks like it's the same same dude. David lived with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the Carmelitess, Nabal's wife. Saul was told that David had fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. David said to Achish, If now I have found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in one of the cities in your country that I may dwell there. For why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? Then Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Therefore Ziklag belongs to the kings of Judah to this day. The number of the days that David lived in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. That is the end, or it comes to 12, 27.7. So now we're going to jump into 1 Chronicles 12, 1-7. through 7. Now these are those who came to David at Ziklag. While he was a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish, they were among the mighty men, his helpers in war. They were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left in slinging stones and in shooting arrows from the bow. They were of Saul's relatives of the tribe of Benjamin. Their chief was Ahiezer, then Joash, the sons of Shema, the Gibeathite, Jeziel, and Pelet, the sons of Asmaveth, Barakah, Jehu, the Anath, <laughs> Anathothite. <laughs> I know, I'm just killing it today. I am just... Killing it, Anathothite, Ishmaiah, the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty and a leader of the thirty, Jeremiah, Jahaziel, Johanan, Josabad, the Gederathite, Elu Eluzai, Jeremoth, Beliah, 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 Shemariah, Shephatai, Shephatiah, the Herophite, <laughs> Harufite, Elkanah, Ishiah, Azarel. Jozer and Jashobim, the Korahites, and Jola and Zebediah. There we go. There's an easy one for you. Zebediah, the sons of Jerohom, Jeroham, Jeroham of Gidor. Yeah. Now, see, they don't. Oh, and see, then they, they stop because we already read this. Some Gadites joined David in the stronghold in the wilderness. Mighty men of valor, men trained for war. So it's, but it's, I think it's the stronghold that makes them think. Because remember, the first time, it was kind of like the, 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 the first time that we read about this, where the Gadites were joining him, the stronghold in the wilderness. Anyways, so that's why they're saying, hey, the, verse eight actually happened earlier. That's what they're, that's, I think, is what they are suggesting here. Those who put it together, who are trying to piece this history together and put it in chronological order. So it seems, it seems challenging. 
It seems challenging. All right, picking up in 1 Samuel 27, 8, and we're going to go through 29, 11. David and his men went up and raided the Geshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites, for those were the inhabitants of the land who were of old on the way to Shur, even to the land of Egypt. David struck the land and saved no man or woman alive and took away the sheep, the cattle, the donkeys, the camels, and the clothing. Then he returned and came to Achish. Achish said, Against whom have you arrayed today? David said, Against the south of Judah, against the south of the south of the Jeremielites, and the south of the Kenites. David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring them to Gath, saying, Lest they should tell about us, saying, David did this, and this has been his way all the time he has lived in the country of the Philistines. Achish believed David, saying, He has made his people Israel utterly to abhor him. Therefore he will be my servant forever. But what did he really do? Right? He was raiding Israel's enemies. He was raiding Israel's enemies. That's what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was doing. And he said, oh yeah. I'm <clears throat> but the area is where they were supposed to, right? Take over, but they were left. Right. You remember. You remember them coming into the promised land? Yeah. You remember. In those days, the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. <clears throat> oh, now kind of your bluff has been called. Achish said to David, Know assuredly that you will go out with me in the army, you and your men. David said to Achish, Therefore you will know what your servant can do. Achish said to David, Therefore I will make you my bodyguard forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. Saul had sent away those who had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. The Philistines gathered together themselves and came and encamped in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they encamped in Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of Yahweh, Yahweh didn't answer him by dreams, by Urim, or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek for me a woman who has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. So, what is this a familiar spirit, right? It's like it's the, those who practice witchcraft here is what he's talking about not like somebody oh i know them not that kind of familiar his servant said to him behold there is a woman who has a familiar spirit at endor saul disguised himself and put on other clothing and went he and two men with him and they came to the woman by night then he said please consult for me by the familiar spirit and bring me up whomever i shall name to you the woman said to him behold you know that Saul, what Saul has done, how he has cut off those who have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? Saul swore to her by Yahweh, saying, As Yahweh lives, no punishment will happen to you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up to you? He said, Bring Samuel up for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. The king said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up out of the earth. He said to her, what does he look like? She said, an old man comes up. He is covered with a robe. Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and showed respect. Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me to bring me up? Saul answered, I am very distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me and answers me no more by prophets or by dreams. Therefore, I have called you that you may make known to me what I shall do. Samuel said, why then do you ask for me since Yahweh has departed from you and has become your adversary? It's like, I'm a prophet of Yahweh. Yahweh has done to you as he spoke by me. It's like, is, I told you this already. Yahweh has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, even to David, because you didn't obey Yahweh's voice and didn't execute his fierce, fierce, fierce wrath on Amalek. Therefore, Yahweh has done this thing to you today. Moreover, Yahweh will deliver Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. Yahweh will deliver the army of Israel also into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell immediately his full length on the earth and was terrified because of Samuel's words. There was no strength in him, for he'd eaten no bread all day long or all night long. So it seems as, as he was trying to uh, entreat to the Lord, right, as he was trying to get an answer from it does look like he was like he'd spent time in prayer and fasting but no answer came the woman came to Saul and saw that he was very troubled and said to him behold your servant has listened to your voice and I have put my life in my hand and I have listened to your words which you spoke to me now therefore please listen also to the voice of your servant and let me set a morsel of bread before you eat that you may have strength when you go on your way 
But he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, constrained him, and he listened to their voice. So he arose from the earth and sat on the bed. The woman had a fattened calf in the house. She hurried and killed it. She took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread out of it. She brought it before Saul and before his servants, and they ate, and they rose, and they went away that night. They rose up, and they went away that night. All right, so now we are in the... First Samuel 29, we're going to go to verse 11. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to Aphek, and the Israelites encamped by the spring, which is in Jezreel. The lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands, and David and his men passed on in the rear with Achish. Then the princes of the Philistines said, what about these Hebrews? Achish said to the princes of the Philistines, isn't this David, the servant of the Saul of king of Israel, who has been with me these days, or rather these years? I found no fault in him since he fell away until today. But the princes of the Philistines were angry with him. And the princes of the Philistines said to him, Make the man return that he may go back to his place where you have appointed him and let him not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he become an adversary to us. For with what should this fellow reconcile himself to his Lord? Should it not be with the heads of these men? Isn't this David of whom people sang to one another in dances? Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. So basically they're saying, bro, this is not worth the risk. It is not worth the risk. We are going to attack his people. He might turn on you in battle and reconcile himself to his master by bringing your head and our heads. Then Achish called David and said to him, as Yahweh lives, you have been upright and you're going out and you're coming in with me and the army is good in my sight for I have not found evil in you since the day of your coming to me to this day. Nevertheless, the Lords don't favor you. Therefore now return and go in peace that you not displease the Lords of the Philistines. David said to Achish, but what have I done? What have you found in your servants so long as I have been before you to this day that I may know not go and fight against the enemy of enemies of my Lord, the King? Achish answered David, I know that you are good in my sight as an angel of God. Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said he shall not go up with us to the battle. Therefore, now rise up early in the morning with the servants of your Lord who have come with you. And as soon as you are up early in the morning and have light, depart. So David rose up early, he and his men, to depart in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines, and the Philistines went up to Jezreel. All right. First <clears throat> uh, Chronicles twelve nineteen. Some of Manasseh also joined David when he came with the Philistines against Saul to battle, but they didn't help them, for the lords of the Philistines sent them away after a consultation, saying, he will desert to his master Saul to the jeopardy of our heads. All right, and just one last thing before we leave this, uh, for Samuel, before we jump into Psalms or the Psalm for today, it seems it's interesting to me because remember, like in 29 here, it says, hey, remember when, when Saul has a, a witch, a wizard, a th- the, her with a familiar spirit? We're not going to get into that right now, just in case you were, that's what you were wondering. Remember, but he didn't dist- he didn't execute the fierce wrath on Amalek, which is what he was supposed to do, his judgment. But David did. David and his men went up and raided the Geshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites, for those were the inhabitants of the land. And remember, he left none alive. I don't know what to do with it. I, it's just interesting. It's interesting to me. For the chief musician, this is Psalm 56, to the tune of Silent Dove in Distant Lands, a poem by David when the Philistines seized him in Gath. Because he did go back and forth into Gath, right? This is his second trip into Gath. It it could have been, I, I say, I say, could have been either time. Could have been either time. That's what I'm saying. I think it's more likely that it was the first time because the Philistines didn't seize him here in this one. Really, he came in with, right before it was just dude with a sword spitting on himself with spittle dripping down, acting like a crazy man. He came, he had his wives, he had his men. He was rolling, he was rolling thunder here. He had power, he had authority, he had mighty men with him. He was a force to be reckoned with when he came the second time into Gath. But let's read Psalm 56. Be merciful to me. God for man wants to swallow me up all day long. He attacks and oppresses me. My enemies want to swallow me up all day long. 
for they are many who fight proudly against me. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God I praise his word. In God I put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They conspire and lurk, watching my steps. They are eager to take my life. Shall they escape by iniquity? In anger, cast down the people's God. You count my wanderings. You put my tears into your container. Aren't they in your book? Then my enemies shall turn back in the day that I call. I know this, that God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. In Yahweh, I will praise his word. I have put my trust in God. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Your vows are on me, God. I will give thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death and prevented my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Anyway, you look at it, they're both true i mean even if it wasn't king akish right when he was like do i lack madmen that you brought me this fellow or when he's like yo you're good with me you me we cool but the lord of the philistines are against you like the philistines were against him the same they were like dude this is the guy who killed the tens of thousands of us what is he doing here both times philistines were against him both times he was on the run from Saul. So he was on the run from Saul. Those who were supposed to be his family. This is, this is his family, right? This is his, that's his, his brother-in-law, brother-in-law, father-in-law. This is father-in-law. That's what he's saying. This is father-in-law. Or his former father-in-law now, but at the time it was his father-in-law that was trying to kill him. So he was betrayed by his family, driven to his enemies or where he was trying to hide out and they wouldn't take him either. Nobody was interested in taking David. He felt oppressed and attacked on all sides. You felt like this. I felt like this. We've all felt like this before, right? Where we feel betrayed by everyone. It it seems like you can't get a fair shake anywhere. Right. Where you're just like, man, come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. What's going on? What's happening? What's happening? David and here in Psalm 56, he turns to God. He says, man wants to swallow me up all day long. He attacks and oppresses me. And he had the means to fight back. Maybe not the first time. Right. He didn't have the means to fight the first time. But the second time he had he had his he had his roll dogs. He had his dudes with him. He had his dudes. He had his armed men with him. It would have been easy. And he had Saul's head twice. It would have been easy for him to fight back with violence against those like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, I'm not part of the fam no more? No problem. You're dead to me. I now fight against you. And right here, he was was about ready to fight against Israel, against his own people. But God spares him. Spares him from doing that. They don't trust him because the Philistine lords don't trust him, so they send him back. So he doesn't do. So he's continued just to, or he 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 was raiding Israel's enemies, just not the Philistine enemies at the time. But this is what he does. I know this, that God is for me, regardless of the circumstances. Most likely, our circumstances aren't quite this bad. Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. People hunting you to kill you living in the wilderness, lost your spouse, given away to somebody else, not trusted by those to whom you've proven yourself. I have put my trust in God. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? In God, I will praise his word. Your vows are on me, God. I will give thank offerings to you for you have delivered my soul from death and prevented my feet from falling. We don't do much with death, right? I mean, we, those who are close to death, we typically, if we know it, we put them out of sight, out of mind, into homes, into places. And then we bury, of course, our dead out of sight. We remove so much from our lives that has any semblance of death. We've talked about this before. 
on this show, in Psalm 90. But we put them away, right? With supermarkets, animals, neatly packaged. Death is out of our mind. Let's let's put our and and right yesterday was Easter, so it's Monday morning. It's actually. I know I don't talk about it too much. Actually. But like the Lord Jesus Christ gave up his life, breathed his last, and said, his, right, he said it is finished, cried out, breathed his last. He gave his life. Same life as you and I had, only with more temptations, greater temptations. Never had Satan offer you everything. Shoot. I don't even have control of <laughs> reign over my own home here. <laughs> you know, it's just, we are going to die. The day, the day is coming for us. What will we do with that time? Are you ready? Is your heart prepared for today to be to the day? I don't know. I think we should. I think we should have a healthier view of that. A healthier thought of that. And it should be revolving around this. God is for me. But when he calls me home, I'm ready to go. Call upon the Lord. Put my tears into your container, he says. Aren't they in your book? Then my enemies shall turn back in the day that I call. And David's not in any rush to die, right? He calls it and says, God has delivered me. But in the in-between, he has a right view of it here. Praise his word. Trust him. Not be afraid. Live courageously. Because when, just like when the Lord Jesus Christ gave up his life, he will call to you when your time is up. Not a moment before. Not a moment before. Let's pray. If you're driving, eyes up, eyes open, head on a swivel, be alert of your surroundings. If you're not, you can close your eyes, no problem. Be alert of your surroundings, I guess, as well. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the death of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. Thank you that he willingly embraced it. That he gave up his life. No one took it from him. He gave up his life and let us view our lives in the same way that we give up our lives. We give up our lives freely, freely because they're yours. It's our lives are yours. We trust you. You're for us. None can be against us. No one has the authority. No one has the power to take our lives apart from your, your will and your plan. Give us uh, courage. Give us faith, Father, during this time or during our daily, daily efforts as we are uh, attempting to live this out more fully and more properly and more um, with steadfast dedication unto you and lord uh, draw near to us we pray give us grace and courage in jesus name amen all right y'all thanks for listening appreciate you and uh, show notes at notmanynoble.com email at uh, notmanynoble at gmail.com and um, i'll catch y'all tomorrow